Come on, stand on your feet and begin to worship him in this place. Come on, leader, come on, making a sound. Come on, come on, making a sound. Head clapping, feet moving, and mouth open. If you can stand, I'm asking you to stand to your feet as we enter into worship. Oh! 
here to bring the vision statement. If you don't know, we have the vision statement on all the monitors of the yeah. sanctuary. So it should be in your neighbor's mouth. But if not, feel free to look at the monitors. Now on the count of three, we're going to say it with power and unity. One, two, three. We are New Beginning Ministries. Our vision is transformed to a victorious theme taken from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which according to the Amplified Version states that, Therefore, if any person be engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. Behold, previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Our vision is translated here upon the earth through a dynamic, multicultural, non-denominational ministry emphasizing faith, family, and fellowship. We are a word reading, a word believing, and a word doing kind of people. All for God's glory. We will walk in the fruit of the Spirit, operate in gifts of the Spirit, and daily put on the whole armor of God, believing in the fivefold ministry offices, and taking part in the evidence of His glory with signs, wonders, and miracles following. We long to see lives transformed by introducing a real God We 
the darkness. We not not more shall I see. I love you, Lord. Show me your marvelous light. I love you, Lord, for renewing my mind. He not Yeah, it's a book, she must 
Took care of all your enemies. See how I'm
He's bending hearts. He's regulating minds. He's delivering. Deliverance is in the house. Deliverance is in the house. Deliverance is in the house. Whatever you need, whatever you need. Yeah, boy. 
Lord. Hallelujah. So with this being the last um, lesson in this series, I just wanted to do a brief review for you all that weren't here so we can all be on the same page as we end. Amen? Amen. So when we started off with the evidence of the promise, we talked about Prophet Google told us that there were 7,000 487 promises in the Bible. How many are there? 7,487. So there were 7,487 promises in the Bible that God made to mankind. So we started off in the series and we talked about the transformational promises. We talked about the provisional promises. And today we're talking about the victorious promises or the triumphal promises. Yeah. So God has promised us in those three categories a multiplicity. We got that from Apostle yeah. Greg. Yeah, 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 a yeah, multiplicity yeah. Yeah. of things in those categories. Amen? Yeah. So first it talked about in the transformational promises that uh, be ye not conform, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah, right. And then we went on and we talked about three different people in the Bible and how they were transformed. Right. We talked about Zacchaeus and how he was a tax collector, he used to steal from the people, and he had an encounter with Jesus, right. and then he got transformed. Yeah. We talked about Saul on the road to Damascus and how God transformed him into Paul. And then we talked about the prodigal son and how right. he was transformed in his mind. He forgot who he was. Right. And sometimes some of us forget who oh. we are. Oh. We forget who we are. We forget that we're king's kids. Oh. Hey. We forget that we're mighty through God. We forget that victory is ours. Amen. Yeah. We forget that we've already won the battle. Sometimes we forget. And then we talked about um, that um, God is the ultimate promise maker and God is the ultimate promise keeper. In that, we talked about a seed to a tree. We talked about the seed and we gave an analogy of an apple. And we broke down the various parts of an right. apple. And in breaking down the various parts, we talked about the skin of the apple, which is the skin or the peel of the apple. And that's the outside appearance. So don't get caught up on people's outside appearance. Say it. Say it. Don't get caught up on Say the outside it. appearance. Because people can look good on the outside and be towed up from the flow up on the inside. So that outside is just the path. It's not really what's in there. So when you see people, don't get caught up on the outside appearance. Because you can look holy and be rotten. And you can look rotten and be holy. Amen? So don't get caught up on that outside appearance. And then we went on here to talk about the flesh. The flesh of the apple is the meat. That's the part that most of us eat. That's the flesh of the apple. And we broke that down to spiritual talk about that's carnality. We talked about the flesh, that's the mind, the will, and the emotion. We talked about how we need to die of ourselves. I want, I think, I feel. That's our will, yeah. our mind, and our emotion. And if we die to our will and we get tapped into God's will, yeah. we can walk out this victorious life that he's already promised that we can have. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then we went on and talked about the seed, the seed, the seed of yeah. the apple. And we said if we take that seed and replant it, it will reproduce into other apples. And we have to understand that we have a seed of righteousness on the inside of us. And God has already planted that seed on the inside of us. And when he planted that seed on the inside, he already named that seed. Amen? So that seed is the pastor. That seed is the evangelist. That seed is the prophet. That seed is the apostle. That seed is whatever God has placed inside of you. We talked about when God created you, that he's our maker and our creator. And he created you for a specific purpose, right? Y'all remember we talked about if he created the vacuum cleaner, he created it to vacuum the floor. And if he created the dishwasher, he created it to wash the dishes. Now the vacuum trying to be the dishwasher. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work because that's not what you're created for. Yeah. So we have to find out what God created yeah. us for and be that whatever he is he created us for. Not trying to imitate somebody else. Amen. Yeah. Not trying to get their blueprint and try to make it work for us. Amen. Yeah. So we're gonna have to be what God created us to be. Amen. Yeah. And then we talked about change is heart work. Yeah. Say it with me. Change is heart work. So when we talked about change being hard work, we talked about the transformation that would have to take place, that would have to be a change in our heart. 
the way we look at things, the way we see things, the way we perceive things, the way we respond to things would have to change. Because the transformation that is going on in our mind also needs to go on in our heart so we can be transformed into whatever it is that God created us to be. Amen? And then after that, we talked about the provisional promises. Okay. We talked about wisdom being the principal thing. And the Bible telling us that anybody that lacks wisdom, what should they do? Did it say only the Christians? No, no. It said anybody that lacks wisdom, all they have to do is ask. And then God does what? He gives it to them un undefined. He's going to give you that wisdom that you're asking him for. Amen? Amen. And then we closed out. No, we said um, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. So I said that Apostle and I know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We've seen so many things in this last 11 years doing this thing called ministry. Yeah! I don't think nothing could shock us I don't think nothing could blow our wig back. I don't think nothing could surprise us. Because we know a thing or two. Because we have seen a thing or two. And I talked about that. And then we ended on the sustained, prolonged provision. How God is going to provide for us. And there will be a time in our life when we will go to the third dimension of provision. Where God will be providing everything that we need. We talked about how um, um, Job had his ups and he had his downs and he had his ups and he had his downs. And then he ended up on a place called the third dimension of provision where all his needs were met and God continually provided for him for the rest of his life. So we as Christians do not have to be on that roller coaster ride going up and going down. There is a place called prolonged, sustained provision where God will provide for you. And we also talked about that in um, Daniel. No, it was Daniel. No, it was, you know, the one who the brothers threw him in the pit? Yeah. Joseph, I'm sorry. We talked about that with Joseph, and Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit, and he was on the roller coaster ride up and down. He was in the pit. He was in the palace. He went to jail. They lied. They told. They made promises that they didn't keep. But one thing that he had was a mind to know that God was going to take care of him. And in the end, God placed him second in command in the yeah. land of Egypt, so he had sustained, prolonged provision. Amen. Amen. So here we are today talking about the triumphal, victorious promises. And in the triumphal, victorious promises, God has promised us victory over fear, victory over temptation, victory over sin, and victory over death. God has promised us victory over fear, victory over temptation, victory over sin, and victory over death. Those are the four main promises that God has promised us victory over. So sometimes we think we're in trouble, but we're really in training. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Oh sometimes we think that we're in trouble, but we're really in training. So sometimes when you're in a situation and you think that it's trouble, God is training you for your next. Amen? And in God training you for your next, I think about David. So David was um, the eighth of his father's son. And then when Samuel came to anoint the brothers, David was not even thought of to be invited to the party. So when Samuel got there, he was like, okay, the Spirit of the Lord told me that one of Jesse's sons was going to be the next king. So he showed up, and they was all cleaned up and pumped up and powered up and lined up to be see who was going to be chosen for king. So they was all lined up, and um, Samuel walked past. He looked at his son. He looked him up and down. The oil didn't flow. He had oil that he was going to anoint him with care. He went to the next one. The oil didn't flow. He went to the next one and the next one and the next one. And he got to the last one and he looked around. He said, is there another? Is there another? Do you have another son? Because I know that I come here to anoint the next king, but it's not any one of these sons right here. And then his father said, well, it's David. David is out there tending to the sheep. That's the youngest son. He said, go get him. Have him come here. Can you imagine everybody else was all cleaned up, pumped up, powered up, and prayed up? 
for the anointing ceremony, and David was out there tending to the sheep. So when Dave came in, he was smelly, he was dirty, he wasn't even ready to be anointed. So he showed up, and Samuel turned over his vow, and he got anointed as king. So when David got anointed as king, what did he do? He went right back out there to tend to the sheep. So when you're in the house of God and you get a prophetic word, you need to go right back out there and tend to those sheep. So because you got a prophetic word, that don't mean that you're going to step up and be crowned as king today. That time has to come. There's some work that has to be done. You're not in trouble. You're in training. And you have to go through the training to be able to get what it is that God has for you. So just because David was anointed as king doesn't mean the time was right now. David had to go out there and continue training before he can take his place on the throne. So David went back out there after he was anointed from king. And then um, one thing that different from David and Joseph, Joseph had a dream. Right. Joseph had to convince his family that God had something special for him. David was anointed right there in front of his whole family. Everybody knew that there was something special about David. So David went right back out there and attended to the sheep. And then his father, the, there was a, a fight going on with the Palestine, Philistines and the army of Israel. So then they had this giant who was like the number one boss man for the Philistines. So everybody in the Israeli army, they were scared of him. His name was Goliath. Everybody in the army was scared of him. This is the fear. God is going to give you victory over any fear that you may come against. So if you got a Goliath in your life, know that God has promised that you will have victory over that thing. Amen? So as he was out there tending to the sheep, his brothers, they all got ready to go fight the Philistines and the Israeli army. So they was ready to fight, but they were scared. So there go Goliath. They all stand up ahead. No, you go first. Uh oh, you go first. Uh oh, you go first. No, nobody want to come. So here come David with some peanut butter jelly sandwiches. <laughs> David showed up with his peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for his brothers. And they had an attitude with him. Talking about, what you doing down here? You just trying to be nosy. You just want to know what's going on. He was like, no. Daddy sent me down here to bring y'all some lunch. And they didn't believe him, but he didn't care because he knew what his daddy said. <laughs> so when things are going on and people think something differently than your intentions are, you don't have time to be worried about how they're going to take this thing. I know why I'm here. I know what my daddy asked me to do. And I'm on assignment for my daddy. My daddy asked me to bring y'all some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and that's why I'm but while I'm here, what's going on? While I'm here, is my assistance needed? What's going on? Boy, you're just a little kid. Go on. You don't have nothing to do with this. So while David was there, and the men were walking in fear, um, David was like, uh, I think I can take him. So then they said, okay, y'all sit down, sit down. Let's read this. First Samuel, first Samuel. 17, 24 through 26. First Samuel 17, 24 through 26. Amen. Y'all ready? 1 Samuel 17, 24 through 26. 1 Samuel 17, 24 through 26. Y'all, let's read it. Ready? Read. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. Will give him his daughter and give his father's house a distant from 
fit. This, this ain't gonna work. So you can't put on somebody else's anointing and try to go in and do something under the pretense of what God has called you to do. You got your own unique anointing that you have to flow in to do what it is that God has called you to do. Amen? You have a whole set of people that God wants you to um, be influencing for his glory. Amen? So while he was there and he was looking around, so then he kept on saying, I can do it, I can do it. So I was like, no, David, you ain't going to be able to do this. You ain't going to be able to. He was like, I can do that. He said, when I was out there, he was like, I already killed a bear. A bear? The king said, I'm like, really? A bear? He was like, yeah, I killed a bear. He was like, I already killed a lion. He was like, you killed a lion. He's like, yeah, they were trying to take my daddy's sheep, and I wasn't having it. I wasn't having it. I'm responsible for these sheep. I'm responsible for these sheep. Apostle and I are going in prayer for you every single night for these 21 days because we're responsible for these sheep. Nothing is going to come against you. Not on our watch, amen? Not on our watch, y'all not going to be defeated. Not on our watch, y'all not going to be um, um, victorious. Not on our watch, y'all going to have all the victory that the Bible says that we can have because we are going to intercede for you on our watch. Clap your hands for Jesus. The king. So, first saw uh, First Samuel 17, 36 and 37. First Samuel 17, 36 and 37. Y'all learning something today, yeah. amen? Yeah. First Samuel 17. Okay, 36. Okay, ready? Read. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like all of them, seeing he has defiled the armies of the living God. More. Because it didn't look like David could beat Goliath. 
Goliath. So I come here to tell you that every Goliath in your life is going down. Every Goliath in your life is going down. Think about a Goliath and watch it go down in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. David was confident. His confidence helped carry him to walk in the victory that God decreed and declared for him to have. Amen. So with Goliath, he was an army that had inferior weapons. Um, God empowered David to kill the mighty Goliath. The Philistines scattered in fear. So after he killed Goliath, then what was next? Do y'all think he just went home and sat down and watched Netflix and chilled for the rest of his life? <laughs> after he beat Goliath, there was what? Another battle. And after he had victory over that, then it was what? Another battle. So you don't get to just sit down and chill after you win the victory. You got to be prepared for the next battle. So a lot of times people sit down, okay, I'm victorious, I won this, but you don't see what's coming. And then you get sideswiped by something else because you still wasn't in the posture. David was anointed to kill Philistines. So even Saul told him, he said, okay, before I give you my daughter, so Saul was like a trickster almost, because he told him that if he killed Goliath, he was going to get his daughter. But now he's telling you, you have to go out and kill 200 Philistines, and then I'll give you my daughter. David went out, killed 300 Philistines, and bought their foreskins to Saul. You're going to be PG in the house. He bought their foreskins to Paul. Yeah. They said Goliath was real tall and Davis was real short and he could see right right here. That's why he said you uncircumcised Philistine. He knew that he was uncircumcised because he was about right there. Okay, let's keep it going. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. So how do we respond in any given situation is going to set the tone for the rest of it. Amen? So next, victory. We have victory over fear, temptation, sin, and death. We have victory over fear, temptation, sin, and death. What do we have victory over? Fear, temptation, sin, and death. So let's talk about the temptation. We have victory over temptation in 1 Corinthians 10. 12 and 13, it says, Therefore, let him who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. No temptation has been overtaken except such is common to man. Right. But God is faithful, faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he has also made a way of escape that you might be able to bear. So for every temptation that you face, God has already made a way of escape for you. So when I think about that, I think about it like you go temptation, and the twin for temptation is a way of escape. So you got temptation, you got a way of escape, they right there, they always roll with you. They always roll with you. So at any given time, when you're tempted, you can take the way of escape. So you can either take the temptation or you can take the way of escape. So when you're tempted, God has not already made a way of escape for you. So any temptation that you might come against, he has already made the way of escape. You get to choose. You get to choose. So God has created us as human beings with choices we choose. We choose to love God or we choose to love the world. It's our choice. We choose to be holy or we choose to live like the world. It's our choice. So every day you have a choice. So when temptation comes to you, who is it? It's me, baby. You got a choice. It's me, baby. You got a choice. No, we're not doing it. You already know. You have a choice. So the choice is yours if you take that or not. So temptation is there, but God has already made a way of escape. And in that way of escape, we have to be sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit to take the way that is already provided for us. Already provided for us. It's not like once you get saved, you live in this bubble and nothing is going to come around you. Once you get saved, Satan, like, what, you ain't no muscle? trying to get you back on his side. He's trying to get you back on his side. Okay, you was on my side. You was my number one gangster. Now you trying to be holy. You was my number one gangster. You was out there rolling hard. Really rolling. And now you trying to be all soft. Talk about praise the Lord. And you was a gangster in the street. Be a gangster for Jesus. Be a gangster for Jesus. You just switched I'm a gospel gangster. I'm a Christian gangster. I'm a holy roller. 
choice is yours. So when, God, when, when the world is tempting us with certain things, we have to put up boundaries. Say boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries are very important yeah. in a Christian life. Yeah. We have to set up boundaries. I know y'all sick of hearing about being an apostle. Don't watch rated R movies because that's a boundary for us. So y'all don't know I used to be um, the number one cusser, okay? Could nobody out cuss me. I could just cuss them uh, like a piranha. I have a piranha. So I don't need to be watching those movies with all that cussing in it because before you know it, I'll be cussing. And I'll see a cuss word still my, fall out of my mouth from time to time. I try to reel it back in, amen? But we don't need to be seeing things because whatever you ingest, you will project. Whatever you ingest, you will project. So you can't eat the world all day and spit up Jesus. You cannot. It's not, it's not possible. You can't. But they used to say garbage in, garbage out. You're not going to let somebody come around and just tell you foolishness all day and think you're going to be talking and making some sense. So the temptation, there's a way of escape. God has given us victory over temptation. Amen? Amen. And next is sin. He's given us victory over fear, temptation, and sin. What he's given us victory over? Fear, Say it like you mean it. Fear, Okay, let's go to Romans 6, 12 and 14. He's given us victory over sin. It says that he has overcome the world. God has already given us victory over it. He has lived on this earth. He's walked through everything that we want to, and he walked through it with victory. So he is already our example, and he is showing us the way. Amen? So knowing that God has given us victory over it, we can just follow his example. So as we follow God's example in Romans 6, 12 through 14, let's read it together. What does it say? Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey and do not present your members of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For the sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not So that's why Jesus came and died so we can have grace. So now we're under the grace, the blood of Jesus, so we don't have to be under the law. But in being under the law, they was like, under the law caused you to sin because it had these rules and regulations that you could not keep. You could not keep them. So as a believer, there we are not subjected to sin, but there is still a sin problem. Because there is still a sin principle. Yeah. So in knowing that there is a sin problem and a sin principle, it's telling us that we should not subject our bodies to the things that will cause us to sin. Wow. And then in verse number 13, it goes on to say, and we should not um, let our parts sin either. So that means that don't let your hands steal. Yeah. Don't let yeah. your hands steal. Uh -huh. Don't let your mouth lie. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. those are your parts that are taking part in uh -huh. sin. So if I was at work and I took this ink pen and I know it wasn't mine, I'm still. Yeah. If I'm making copies at work and I know I didn't pay for no ink, I'm still. So it's all the little things that we do and it's like little bitty things, but they come across us and it's still a secret. So then we have to get our minds right and our thoughts right so we are not still. If I say, if I'm standing right there and I tell the kids, tell them I ain't here, I'm lying. <laughs> victory today, amen? We're going to get the victory up in here. We're going to point it all out so we can all walk in victory in 2021. In 2021, amen, we are going to have the victory. Hallelujah. So we said that our members should not sin either, that we should be instruments of righteousness. So if God created us, and he's our maker and our, our creator, he created us to be instruments of righteousness, to be instruments to glorify him, to be instruments to be used in what it is that he would have us to be used for. It says grace to believe. So grace is in the believer because God has placed the grace in us. So that gives us the victory to be able to walk in the sin and not sin. Okay? Sin can be all around you. But you don't have to sin, amen? 
And then it also talks about the Holy Spirit is inside the believer to give us the victory so we won't sin. So as a believer, we're in Christ. Christ has given us grace. Yeah. We as the believer have the Holy Spirit inside of us. That is the seed of righteousness so we won't sin. Amen. Yeah. So if we are tempted with sin, only thing we have to do is do what? Repent and get right back in line. So sometimes people make it really difficult and they want to put on sackcloth and ashes and make a whole big hoop to do of it. You just got to repent. Once you repent, you can get in right standing with Jesus. Amen. So we want to walk in the victory that God has decreed and declared that we can have. We want to walk in the victory that God has died. He died on the cross for us to have that victory. And it's our responsibility to walk in it. Amen. In Romans 20, I mean Romans 5 and 21, it says, Moreover, the law has entered the offense that might be around, that there is sin to bound, that grace will much more abound, so that he that sins reigns in death, and so that the grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin cannot exceed the grace of death. I mean, sin cannot exceed the, the grace that God has promised us. So if there is sin, it said, if sin abounds, grace much more abounds. So if sin abounds, grace much more about it. And then Paul goes on to say, well, shall I consent, continue in sin? Nope. The Bible says, certainly not. You should not push the grace of God and continue to sin. When Jesus was being tempted on the mount and Satan came to him and he had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And I'm sure he was hungry. Yeah. I'm sure he was. Yeah. So Satan told him to turn this rock into bread. And he said, no, he won't do that. And then Satan said, well, why don't you jump off the ledge and have your father send angels to catch you? Jesus said, no. So it's like the temptation was there. That would have been a sin. Just because the grace of God is there doesn't mean you should continue a sin. Wow. Just because the grace of God is there doesn't mean you should push the envelope. If Jesus didn't push the envelope and he is our example, we should push the envelope. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. We need to show up and we need to grow up. Amen. We need to wake up. We need to rise up. We need to show up and we need to grow up in the things of God. So sometimes there will be times when you might feel defeated. Get my song ready, please. Get my song ready. Sometimes you have to do some things to help yourself get out of that rut. I don't know about y'all, but when I'm in a rut, I turn the music on at the house and I turn it on really loud. And then I just go around the house and I just be singing really loud. Red come to the door, I don't even hear him. I just be singing. I just be singing because I know that if I can get my spirit in line with what God said, I will feel better. Sometimes I gotta remind myself of what God said so I can walk in the victory that he promised us. So I don't know how y'all do it, I'ma just tell y'all and show y'all how I do it. So if I was, by chance, might be feeling to be defeated, don't happen too often, but if I am feeling defeated, I need to put on something that's gonna remind me of what God said about me, amen? So I would put on this song if I was feeling a little defeated. Can we do it? No? Yes? Hey! Go <laughs> on, oh, take it up. So I'll be walking around the house, and my heart is feeling heavy, and I just be walking around the house. I, I, I got the victory. I got the sweet, sweet victory in Jesus. I just keep walking around the house. I go upstairs, I go downstairs, I go in the basement, and I keep on saying, to walking around the house after I do. I walk around and I claim the victory. I claim the victory. Turn it up. We can't hear it in the back. I say I got the victory. Hallelujah. I got the victory in Jesus. And I just keep on decreeing. And I just keep on declaring. I got, I got the victory. I got the sweet, sweet victory in Jesus. And I just keep on talking about how victorious I am. And I keep on talking about
you have the victory. You have the victory in Jesus. Amen. God has already given us the victory. We are already victorious. So anytime your heart feel heavy and anytime you might feel defeated, just put on some praise and start thanking God and praising God and let the enemy know that you walk in victory. Hallelujah. And then the next thing you know, you'll start feeling better. Amen. The next thing you know, you'll start talking better. Amen. The next thing you know, you'll be able to have your head in the game and do everything that God said you can do. Amen. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people be trying to fight the enemy in their own power. But God has never told us that we need to fight the enemy. God just told us to stand in victory. Amen. I have my little, give me one of them. I was going on do an example, but the headphones, you know, I'm down right there. But the headphones would work right. Okay. Yeah, I've been thinking about this, y'all. I know. Can I somebody hold the mic? So when you're in a fight, hallelujah. When you're in a fight, y'all know Jesus is the heavyweight champion of the world. Hallelujah. Y'all know Jesus is the heavyweight champion of the world. He's undefeated, undefiled. Never been knocked out. He's a heavyweight champion of the world. His name is Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Who's the heavyweight champion? Jesus. Who's undefeated? Jesus. Who got the victory? Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, y'all ready for battle. Y'all ready for battle. So Jesus is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And if you come in, you better come correct because Jesus got my back. Amen. I got a legion of heavenly angels that's fighting on my behalf. Now when you come, you better know who you are and who God is. Don't be like the sons of Sceva. Y'all heard the story about the seven sons. Sit down, sit down, sit down. We don't need so the seven sons of Sceva, he, they was like they're talking about it was a man and he had demonic evil spirits in him. And the seven sons of Sceva seen Jesus rebuke demons out of people. The seven sons of Sceva seen Paul rebuke demons out of people. So they come up to some man and he got demonic spirits on him. And they like, um, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The demons got up and said, Jesus I know. And Paul I know. But who are you? And they whooped him upside his head. All seven of them. Them demons beat them up so bad that they left out the house butt naked, bleeding and crying. They left out butt naked, bleeding and crying. So you don't need to leave out butt naked, bleeding and crying. You need to know that God has given you victory and you can win the battle. Amen? So if when you're in a, in a battle, you have to know who your opponent is. So sometimes, sometimes you're sleeping with the enemy. And then you want to know why they know everything about you. You're sleeping with the enemy. That's how they know where to hit you at. They sleep, you're sleeping with the enemy. That's how he know where your weaknesses is. You're sleeping with the enemy. That's why you can't walk in victory. Amen. So if you're sleeping with the enemy, he knows your vulnerabilities. You're sleeping with the enemy. He knows your weakness. When you're sleeping with the enemy, he knows where to hit you at. Hallelujah. You can't be having the enemy rubbing on you. You can't be having the enemy leaning on you. And you can't have the enemy confiding in you. You can't have an enemy talking to him. You can't be sleeping with the enemy and then want to know, why can't I have the victory? Because you're sleeping with the enemy. He know how to defeat you. He know what's going on in your life. He know the weakness and the secrets. He know exactly where it is. Hallelujah. So the enemy ain't going to try to tempt you with something that you don't like. The enemy ain't going to try to tempt you with something that you don't like. So if you don't like liquor, he ain't going to offer you a drink. If you don't smoke cigarettes, he ain't going to offer you a cigarette. If you don't smoke weed, he ain't going to offer you a joint. If you don't like to gamble, he ain't going to take you to Vegas or to a casino. The enemy is going to tempt you with whatever you like. Whatever you like, that's what he's going to tempt you with. Why? Because he know what you like. He's been watching you. He's been following you. He see your moves. He see how you react and how you respond to situations. So you cannot be letting the enemy know what you like and then tempt you and fall for the okie doke. Amen? So if the enemy comes along and you're trying to fight the devil with all you got and you get punched in the mouth and you say, God, how can I win? And 
and you take two steps back forward and you get knocked three steps backward and you stand and you say, God, how can I win? You've been lied on, betrayed, talked about, misused and abused. And you say, God, how can I win? And you keep on asking God, how can I win? My brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you how you can defeat the enemy and defeat him every single time. You want to know how you can defeat the enemy and defeat him every single time. You want to know how you can defeat the enemy and he will never be able to knock you out. You want to know how you can defeat the enemy and he will never be able to have the victory over you. Y'all want to know? You say, you don't get in the ring. <laughs> You don't get in the ring. You don't get in the ring with the enemy. That's how you defeat them every single time. Why? Because the God never told you to fight a battle. Because the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. So if, if Jesus didn't get in the ring with the enemy, you shouldn't be getting in the ring with the enemy. If Jesus defeated the enemy by the word, you should be defeating the enemy with the word. So when Jesus, when Satan came against Jesus and he was trying to tempt him, he said, it is written. It is written in the word. And that's when he fought the enemy with the word. So you got to have the word in you so you can fight the enemy every single time. So when the enemy comes up against you, you say, Satan, not today. Not today, Satan. Say, Satan, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Satan, the power of God is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus rebuke you. You just keep on quoting the word. Victory is mine, said the Lord. This battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. So if you get in the ring with the enemy, he is guaranteed to take you out. If you get in the with the enemy, you are saying, I'm a glutton for punishment. If you get in a ring with the enemy, he gonna hit you in your finances. If you get in a ring with the enemy, he gonna uppercut you in your marriage. If you get in a ring with the enemy, he gonna hit you below your belt as it relates to your children. If you get in a ring with the enemy, he gonna put you in a full Nelson in your emotions. If you get in a ring with the enemy, he gonna have you up against the rope as it relates to your child. And if you get in a ring with the enemy, you better be ready to roll with the punches because the enemy is not for you to fight. This battle belongs to the Lord. And if you want to be saved by the bell, you need to call on the name of Jesus. So when he comes against you, you say Jesus. When he tries to come against you, you say Jesus. When he tries to come against you, you say Jesus. Because Jesus will be right there to defend you every single time. Because this battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. Give it up for Jesus. in the ring with the enemy. You don't want to get in the ring. That's how you win every single time you do not get in the ring. Don't think you that tough. You be like the sons of Sceva. You be running out of there half naked and bleeding. Don't get in the ring with the enemy. Amen? So you want to quote scriptures. You want to quote scriptures. So you got to have some word in you. That's your weapon. Praise is your weapon. The word of God is your weapon. So you got to have the word of God on the inside of you so you can defeat the enemy every single time. So whenever he try to come against you, you say, it is written, and you quote the word of God. There is shelter under the shadow of the Almighty. I can abide in the presence of the Almighty. So when I'm spending time with God, he can give me a strategic plan so I can get out of the traps that the enemy has set for him. God will give me a strategic plan where I don't have to be falling in sin, and I don't have to be falling in temptation, and I don't have to walk in fear. Why? Because victory is the Lord's. Give it up for Jesus. So God has given us victory over fear, temptation, sin, and death. God has given us victory over fear, temptation, sin, and death. So let's go into the last one, which is death. We're going to go back to the scriptures that we started with today, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58. Y'all learned something today? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 8. We're going to do it in the Amplified. Amplified version. Do we have the Amplified version? So in that, this is talking about death. 
So we have victory over death, according to the scriptures, because Jesus said, oh, death, where is your sting? Why? Because he rose on the third day from death. So that means that he already has victory over death. And he had paved the way for us. That means that we have victory over death. So we're not fearful of death because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be what? So if we are absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. So we still have the victory. So no matter which way it goes, we win. So we as Christians, we shouldn't be fearful of death. We should know that we're going to go on to glory. We're going to go to be with our Father. We're going to go to a better place. The Bible says that he has a mansion in heaven for us. Amen. So God has already paved the way and got everything that we need. The Bible says if it was not so, he wouldn't tell us that. He already got a house for us in heaven. So we should not be fearful when it comes to death and know what the word says about death. Amen. So we're going to go in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 8 in the Amplified Version. I don't know if y'all can read that. If y'all can read it, let's go verse by verse. Verse 50, read. But I tell you this, brother, flesh and blood cannot become partakers of the word of salvation and therefore share in the kingdom of God. Nor does a perishable that which is decayed inherit or share in the imperishable no more. The flesh will become incorruptible. The dead in Christ will rise first. So that's what the Bible says, that when we die, that the dead in Christ will rise and we will have a new body. Yeah. So we will have a new heavenly body. Yeah. So this body of clay will stay in the ground and our spirit will go on and live for eternity. Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about our spirit living for eternity, that's when we make the decision while we're here on earth. Right. That's when we claim if we're going to go to eternity in heaven or we're going to go to eternity in hell. Okay. The choice is of ours. So that's why we have those two different choices. Yeah. So we choose Christ. How do we choose Christ? We accept him as our Lord and Savior. Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. Now all the rest of the stuff, he will help you get delivered from that. He will help you stop smoking, stop drinking, stop lying, stop fornicating, stop doing all of that stuff. Because the Bible says, such were some of you. Such were some of us. So the Holy Spirit will give us the power to say no, to turn away from those things. So the old Holy Spirit gives us the due to his power to be able to live right. Amen. Amen. Verse number, the next one, 51. Thank the Lord, I tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose of the counsel of God. We shall not all sleep in death, but we shall all be changed. So believers will be instantly transformed into their immortal bodies. So the people that are here when the second coming, they will rise in Christ and get new bodies in the air. So by the time they get to heaven, they have a new body. So they're saying that that transformation will take place for the body of Christ. It will take place for believers. Amen? Amen. Verse number 52. In a moment, in the sweet of God, For this perishable part must put on the imperishable thing. And this mortal part of us, this nature that is capable of God, will put on immortality, freedom from death. So God has already declared that we will have freedom from death. That's the victory that we walk in as sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 54. And when this perishable puts on the and this that was capable of dying puts on freedom from death. Then shall be fulfilled the scripture that said, Death is swallowed up, utterly vanished, and forever and unto victory. Death and the grave is conquered by Jesus. Ah. Jesus conquered death and the grave. Yeah. Jesus conquered it all when he rose on the third day. So if Jesus rose on the third yeah. day and we are, he is our example to show us what we are capable of doing yeah. and what will happen to us. Amen? Amen. 
55. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Now sin and the sting of death and sin exists power upon the soul. So the abuse of the law said that when the law was in effect, people could not, could not keep the law. So no matter how hard they tried, and then you had the Sadducees and the Pharisees pointing out every single misstep. So we needed a savior. If we could save ourselves, there was no need for Jesus to die on the cross. So we're all in need of a savior. Amen. So then when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, some of us accept him as a Savior, but we never cultivate that relationship as Lord. We never cultivate that. So when we look at him as Lord, then we want to follow his commandments. Then we want to cultivate a relationship with him. Then we want to do everything that he has called us to do. Amen. Let's jump down to 58. 58. This is the foundation of scripture for today. 58. Ready? Read. Therefore, my beloved brother, be firm, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor is not futile, it is never wasted. So we have to know that we need to be steadfast, unmovable. Anything that you do for God, God has an account of that. Amen. Anything that you do for God will be counted towards your account. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for choosing us to be on your side. We thank you for anointing us. We thank you for appointing us for such a time as this. And we understand as the body of Christ that we walk in the victory. Say, I got, I got the, victory. the victory. Say, I got, I got the, victory. the victory. Victory over. Victory over. Fear, temptation, sin, and death. Victory over fear, temptation, sin, and death. Clap your hands for Jesus. We got the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that we have the victory. So God truly visited us today. Hallelujah. And we are so grateful and thankful for that. So what I want to do now is just pray for anybody that is struggling as it relates to victory and pray that if you don't have a heavenly language you will get one today amen amen so let's do the heavenly language first anybody that want a heavenly language and you don't have it you desire it come on down come on up because god wants to give you a heavenly language today what happens with your heavenly language speaking in tongues is not the end it's the beginning so when you speak in tongues, it helps you to understand the word. When you speak in tongues, it gives you due to this power. When you speak in tongues, is you are praying to God in a heavenly language. So in order that you have a heavenly language, is three different facets of the heavenly language. One is a heavenly language where you're talking to God. Two is a language that somebody else can understand. Like you can be speaking in tongues and you can be speaking in Italian or German or French, but you don't speak Italian, German, or French. But if somebody was in the audience and they spoke those languages, they would understand what you're saying. And the third one, we've seen a demonstration of it today, is a prophetic tongue. So I sang in a prophetic tongue, and then apostles spoke in a prophetic tongue, and that's the tongue that needs interpretation. So out of the three different tongues, the third one, the prophetic tongue, needs interpretation. So when you read the word and it says, if you're speaking in tongues, there should be an interpreter. There should be an interpreter for that third tongue. If I'm speaking in a, another language, God might be wanting to tell somebody in the audience something, and I don't even know about it. If I'm speaking in my heavenly language, I'm praying to God, and I'm talking to him. So it don't concern y'all. Y'all just happen to be here. Amen. Amen. So if you desire the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I would ask that you come.
If anybody in the back desires the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I would ask that you come. That's just going to give you power. How am I going to see, Kitty? That's just going to give you power. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. It's an awesome thing to have. Yeah. If nobody desires the gift of tongues, I would like to pray for anybody that has a broken heart. If you're feeling defeated, you don't feel like you're walking in the victory, God wants to restore your heart today. He wants you to walk in the victory today. He wants you to be the results of the supernatural evidence that he can make manifest in your life. And we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, I've done what you told me to do. I pray that if somebody desires to give the tongue, that you will give it to them right now. The Bible says that if men will give good gifts to their children, how much more would your Heavenly Father give you a good gift if you ask? So if you ask them for it right now, right there in your seat, if you ask them for it right now on Facebook, and just open up your mouth, say, ah, da, 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 bo, bo, shi, da, 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 and then you'll, you'll begin to flow. You'll begin to speak in your heavenly language. Why? Because you desired it. Everybody speak in your heavenly language. Speak in your heavenly language. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I believe that somebody on the viewing audience is speaking in tongues right now. I believe that somebody desired it in their heart. They'll be speaking in tongues right now. I believe if you're watching the replay months from now, you'll begin to speak in tongues if you desire it right now in the name of Jesus. Because God has no respect of person. If you desire it, he'll do it for you right now. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the victory. That we will walk in the victory that you said that we can have. We will decree and declare the victory. We will have the victory over sin, temptation, death, and fear. Lord, we have the victory. Why? Because your word says that we have it. And we will walk in it right now and forevermore. Lord, I ask that you bless these, your people, yeah. and that they are not just hearers of the word, but they're doers of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And if anybody want to be saved, does, anybody, does everybody know Jesus? Does everybody know Jesus? If you don't know Jesus, I would ask that you raise your hand. You don't have to come up front. We don't want to embarrass you or anything. If you don't know Jesus, if you would raise your hand. All my eyes clear in the back. Anybody need Jesus? Let's just do a, a checkup. Repeat after me. Do you have any father? Yeah, I thank you I for coming into my heart. Lord, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on the third day and you rose again. I accept you into my heart to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to be my God. In Jesus' name, amen. You're saved.
time, with, earlier today, we had prophetic tongues that went forth, and the Lord is saying, is there any interpretations from those prophetic tongues that were spoken earlier in the service? Did God say anything to anyone concerning the prophetic tongues that were spoken earlier in the service? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. This 
you're not sure how to do it, feel free to give me a call. I walk people through the process. <laughs> All right, and um, our 11th anniversary Ooh. for church and on the table with the information on how to um, access that is also on the website. So please start buying your tickets. The tickets are $60 for adults, $30 for children. We want full participation. We want to sell the haul out. Yes. And we are just excited for what God is doing in this 11th year. Yes. And then also finally, um, Apostle Greg is actually uh, participating in the Prophetic Institute's seventh annual Cleveland Prophetic Summit, restoring the integrity to the prophetic. He is teaching one of the um, sessions. He is also going to be taking part in the panel. If you would like to go, it's going to be on Zoom. There are no live sessions in the building, so everything will be on Zoom. You can register on Eventbrite. If you put in um, New Hope, Fellowship, that'll actually bring up the, um, the link for you to purchase registration. Saturday is $50, but the rest of the weekend, which is the evening services, those are free to the public. If you need additional information, I do have some flyers on the table. Do we have any first time visitors? We have quite a few. We even got some yeah. in the back. Woo, 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 woo. first time visitors. Balcony. Yeah. I know. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, um, for you guys, <laughs> you know, in this uh, Corona environment, we're not physically giving hugs, which is really just stressing us because we are a hug church. But we're going to give you a virtual hug so everybody give them a virtual hug. We love you. Thank you for listening to us. Do the best we can. No, don't do the best you can. Do the best. Let, do, now I want you to do your best. Amen. Our best ain't good enough. Do the best that the Lord has placed in you, the grace of God. To go through these last seven days of the fast. And I know there has been some little bit of, you know, what can we eat? People have been texting me, can I have shrimp? Can I have lobster? Meat. I mean, can I, I don't know what meat is, amen. Anything that bleed is meat, like chicken, you know, turkey, cornish hands. Um, I, want, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of everything. Y'all have to excuse me. Visitors, please excuse me. It's just been, 
you know, people, I mean, they don't know what meat is, amen, we are, so I, I mean, I, I, I just have to go, yes, you know, I have to do this, I, I was trying to like, you know, just be grown with it, amen, but then when my texts go off and my messengers go off and it's like, and I'll be like, really, sweetie? So that means no meat. That means if you cut it and it bleed, no meat. No meat. That means if you go in the ocean and throw a rod in or a cage in and pull it out, that means you can't eat that. Amen. Uh, I'm just trying to explain it because really what I'm why I'm telling you this because I ain't tripping with you because whatever you leave on the table, I'm getting. I ain't talking about. I ain't talking about the dinner table. Because this is the year of obedience. And, and some of us have kicked it off in disobedience. And, and so what we have to do, we have to reset. We have to repent. Because the first thing he did, he gave us a test to see if we could even get the results by simply not eating any meat. And usually it comes because we don't pay attention and we don't hear and we don't ask questions. And even the Bible said, all you'll get is get an understanding. So you should never leave out of any conversation not understanding what has been said. So I said all that to say, not to fuck, but to reset us so for these next seven days, we can really get in this race and really come out victorious at the end. I wouldn't give up 21 days and not come out with some results. I'm just sorry. Not me. Not me. Not me. And, I, and I, let, me, let me give this announcement. because This is for Sonya and her crew upstairs. No, the fast is not over Sunday after service. Okay, yeah, I knew that. See, I hear it all. It's not over then. Don't come and ask me. It's not over till midnight. Now, if you want to go 21 and a half days, amen, and then blow it at the last, at the last part of the sprint, that's on you. Because I'm going to get all your stuff too. All right? Everything you work for, I'm just going to be there to grab it up. So don't be mad at me. Because I'm making this public announcement to everybody and to our visitors. They'll just understand later when they come on the first Sunday of February. And God meet us here with everything he want to give us. So I said all that to say, let's go out strong, y'all. If we can, let's go out unified. Yes. Let's show the devil we already got the victory. Yes. And he can't tempt us with no meat. Right. And I'm not going to go through the sweets, but I think y'all know Snickers, donuts, cakes. Uh, uh, you, you just put uh, 10 sugars in that, it became a candy bar. Amen? <laughs> I just wanted to help him. <laughs> so y'all blessed today. How yeah. I many of y'all got the victory? Yeah. Repeat after me. I, I got, got the, victory. the victory. You consider yourself dismissed.